Before you begin, gather all of your supplies. Then measure out the water for the molding powder. Note, we have several kits in various sizes. Please see your written kit instructions for specific water measurements. While the water is being measured, your assistant should wash the child's hand that will be casted. Do not completely dry the hand. It is best if it remains damp. For most kits, add the water to a mixing bowl. You will be mixing first and then transferring the mixed material to a cup as most cups are not large enough for mixing. In the case of an infant kit, mixing in the cup works okay. Add the molding powder to the water. The mixture starts out lavender and will gradually turn pink while mixing. At first, use a churning up and down stirring motion to blend the powder. Mix quickly and thoroughly. The mixture will be similar to cake batter. It will not be lump free, but should be well blended. There are two things you can do to help prevent surface bubbles. The first and easiest is to wet the hand as mentioned previously. The other is to quickly rub some molding material on the hand during the mixing process. When the mixture begins to lose its color, it is time to get the molding material into the molding container, quickly transfer to the molding cup. Do not delay. The mixture will set within about one minute of losing color. Insert the hand or hands. For the first 10 to 15 seconds, the fingers can and should wiggle around within the molding material. Young children and infants tend to do this naturally on their own. This helps reduce surface air bubbles. Avoid touching the sides of the container and keep the hand fully submerged during the entire process. After the first 10 to 15 seconds, Adults should find their position and hold for the duration of the molding process. The hand should remain in the molding material until it is fully set. You will know that it is set when it is no longer sticky, does not leave an impression when the top is pressed down upon, and when the material begins to separate from the wrist. The material sets from top to bottom. Once you think it is set, it is best to wait another 15 to 20 seconds before removing the hand from the mold. Once the mold has set, move the wrist from left to right to break the seal around the wrist. Then slowly and carefully ease out of the mold. There is no rush as the mold will not get any stiffer. Take as much time as you need to remove the hand. Just a side note, the set material very easily and cleanly peels away from skin, plastic, glass, and wood, until it dries out and then it is not as easy to remove. However, it does stick to and is difficult to be removed from clothing. Try avoid getting the material on good clothing. Carefully drain any excess water as well as any pieces of molding material that may have fallen into the mold. You may need to trim loose or excess molding material. Prepare the casting stone. It should be about the consistency of paint. Thin enough to easily pour off the spoon in one continuous pour. It should not fall off the spoon in clumps. If it is not thin enough, it will not be able to fill all the tiny fingers, toes, and other fine details. However, if it is too thin, the final casting will be weaker. Fill the mold with casting stone until about one-third full, about at the level of the fingers. Rotate the cup to line all areas inside the mold with casting stone. The most effective way to prevent air bubbles and to fill all curved fingertips is to rotate the container in the upside down position and allow the stone to pour back out of the container. After you have lined the mold with casting stone, you may use a paintbrush or toothpick to break up any surface air bubbles. Add more casting stone. Rotate, all the while tapping the container to release air pockets. Keep adding stone incrementally being sure to stop between pours to rotate and gently tap the cup. Fill to the desired level. If you choose, you may also pour stone up and over the mold to form a base. Allow the casting stone to cure for about 2 hours. For adult size castings, 3 to 4 hours is required. Once the stone has hardened, you may begin the demolding process. Normally, the slippery mold will slide right out of the cup. However, in the case of an integrated base, you may need to tear the cup away from the top section where it meets the casting stone. Once the mold is free of the container, begin carefully tearing away the mold. Tear off in small pieces to avoid putting stress on the casting. 
be extra careful around the fingers. Once the outer molding material has been removed, you will most likely need to remove small pieces from in between the fingers. A safety pin or toothpick comes in handy for this purpose. Once the demolding is complete, you may need to send or possibly repair the base if you have created one. Occasionally, small surface bubbles need to be brushed off of the back of the hand near hair follicles. This particular statue doesn't appear to need anything other than maybe some minor sanding around the base edge. Allow the casting to dry for several days in a well-ventilated area. Do not allow to dry in a box, or other type of container, or on a shelf with enclosed sides. This would dramatically slow down the drying process and may cause moisture to become trapped. You may use a small fan to move air around the casting, but do not dry in direct sunlight, or near a heat source. It can take anywhere from 3 to 10 days to fully dry depending on the environment and casting size. Once dry, you may seal with acrylic paints, or other sealant meant for plasters and bisques. We hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions not answered here, our FAQ page link can be found at the bottom of the castingkeepsakes.com webpage under the customer service heading.